Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today is November 8th, and it's still warm here in this part of Virginia. We had temperatures up in the 70s, and I'm not sure that we've had one night of frost yet. So the insects are still active. And today, we're going to look at my favorite insect, which is the praying mantis. And we're going to talk about what is myth and what is reality? What is fact and what is fancy? And so we're going to take a look at five interesting features of praying mantises and talk about what is the reality and what is the, the myth. So stay tuned and let's look at the praying mantis up close and personal. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And there's a make this invasive. It's exhausting. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's The praying mantis that I filmed today is a Chinese praying mantis. And there, there are several species of praying mantises that are common in North America. The Chinese the European, and our native Carolina mantis. This one, the Chinese mantis, is the biggest one. And this is the one that we can talk about to address the question, do praying mantises eat hummingbirds? Is that really possible? Have you seen videos or, or photos on the internet of that? So I'm always telling people, you know, if you see something unusual on the internet and a photo, you don't know if it's been doctored up or photoshopped or if it's real. Typically, like a classic one around here on Facebook is, this is a picture of a cougar my friend found on a game camera, you know, in such and such a county. And then I look at the photo and I've seen that photo before. And living in Virginia, we have deciduous forests. And I look in the photo and I see sagebrush and sand. So I know it's not from up here. So always be skeptical. But the fact is on this one, it's true. Praying mantises have killed and eaten hummingbirds. And it's like, it's to me, that that's really frightening. And it's the Chinese praying mantis that can do it. It's the biggest of the praying mantises that we have in this area. And praying mantises like to hang out on hummingbird feeders sometimes. Because the hummingbird feeder, with an, uh, the sugary water nectar-like, attracts hummingbirds as well as bees and wasps and moths and butterflies. So it's a great place for the praying mantis to hunt. He's not intentionally hunting hummingbirds. Pray mantises do not hunt hummingbirds. But if it's hanging there and a hummingbird approaches, the praying mantis has very powerful femur tibia modifications with spines on them. They're super fast, they're lightning quick, and they could grab a hummingbird, and they have. This phenomena has been researched by the, some of the researchers that published in the Wilson Journal of Ornithology, and they documented like 150 different cases where this has happened. Praying mantis has powerful jaws, and he can eat, actually eat that hummingbird if he can overpower it. It takes some luck, it doesn't happen all the time, it's very rare, but the fact is, it has happened, it can happen. Praying mantises have eaten and killed hummingbirds. In fact, praying mantises have been documented to have killed and eaten other vertebrates like lizards and salamanders and frogs. But they're not vertebrate hunters, they're insect hunters. But they're big and strong and powerful, and sometimes if an organism walks by at the wrong time and the mantis is particularly hungry and it can actually make the capture, it can happen. But primarily, praying mantises are insect eaters. Fact or fiction number two, praying mantises can control your insect pests in your home garden. Well, the Chinese praying mantis was introduced in 1896 in Pennsylvania. That and the European mantis was also introduced to the United States to control gypsy moth. Both were hoped that they could help control insects in the garden. But the fact is, praying mantises will eat anything. They'll eat any insect that comes by in the garden. They might eat that insect pest that's gnawing on your, 
your carrots or your tomatoes or your green peppers, but they'll eat butterflies and moths and they'll eat beneficial insects as well. Putting an egg case in a garden results in the birth of a whole bunch of praying mantises. The egg case can contain like 400 mantises and you can buy praying mantis egg cases online. However, as soon as those things hatch, they're going to start to eat each other and they'll eat indiscriminately and they take seven months to grow up into the adult form. So it's a nice idea, but does it really work? Is it going to control insect pests in your garden? It, it's really not. And what you're doing is you're promoting by buying some of the invasive or non-native praying mantis egg cases, you're contributing to the possible decline of our native praying mantises through competition with those things. It's possible that the praying mantis could be beneficial inside a greenhouse in a controlled environment, but overall, the praying mantises will hatch from those eggs. They undergo incomplete metamorphosis, so they're essentially called nymphs when they first hatch out. And the nymphs will molt several times through the year in order to grow. They'll be very small when they, they first come out, and they'll also eat each other. Fact or fancy number three. Is the praying man is praying when when he is sitting on that bush near your house in a supplicative position? Is he devout? Is he meditating? Well, it's funny because the word mantis comes from the Greek for prophet. And so it was recognized as having this sort of deep earthy kind of uh, meditative look about him. And in fact, when the praying mantis is sitting on a bush, it'll sway back and forth like this. And scientists at first weren't sure why, and they speculate that it might be because their eyes are really, really highly developed. And they can see motions from 60 feet away that they might be trying to zoom in and, and see better with those eyes. While the word praying sounds very serene, I've always thought that maybe the praying mantis should be called the praying mantis with an E because it eats so much prey. It's a ferocious predator. And it's an ambush predator. It's a sit and wait predator. It will plant those four legs and sit out with those front tibia femur modifications with sharp spines and wait for an insect to come by and grab it with absolute lightning speed. In the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale, the wolf took over the clothes of grandma, and Little Red Riding Hood looked at the wolf's eyes and said, my, what big eyes you have. Well, the wolf was a predator, and predators have large forward-facing eyes. And the praying mantis is fascinating because it's got large eyes, it's able to see binocularly, they focus forward, and his head can turn up to 180 degrees. So it's really an amazing predator with the eyes that are classic to predators, which are all about seeing and detecting prey and motion. What kind of predator is he? He can eat 800 to 1,000 insects in its lifetime. 800 to 1,000 insects in seven months. That's a big appetite. Fact or fiction number four. Do praying mantises really kill the male while they're mating? And the answer is yes. Praying mantises undergo what's called sexual cannibalism. In order to mate, the male approaches the female and actually jumps on her, physically jumps her. And if he mistimes that jump, a lot of times he will not mate successfully and she will eat him instead. Other times during the process of mating, when the gametes are being transferred to the male to the female, the female may turn and bite off the male's head. The copulation process, that transfer of gametes, will continue for 30 or 40 minutes after and complete the act. Sometimes this is caused by people or researchers studying organisms in a laboratory environment, in a controlled environment where the, the male cannot escape. But it seems that this tends to be on the true side, even in nature. And another recent journal article, another recent research project found that 
the females that ended up eating the male after mating produced more eggs. So there's an evolutionary basis to this behavior because this will ensure that that male's DNA is spread even farther through many, many more babies. Praying mantises females do often eat the male mantis bites his head off and sometimes during the process of transfer of gametes. Fact number five, or question number five, where do praying mantises go in the winter? And I think this is one of the fascinating questions about insects. They have so many different adaptations to overwintering depending on the species. Some will overwinter as eggs, some will overwinter as a larva, some will overwinter as a chrysalis, and others will overwinter as adults, like some of the beetles will dig deep underground. And some insects, like the monarch butterfly, will fly south for the winter, and other insects will live as nymphs under the surface of the water and overwinter that way. How do the praying mantises overwinter? Well, I think they're just too big to dig under something and, you know, get below the frost line and stuff. So their adaptation to overwintering is to produce eggs, and it's the eggs that will overwinter. And the female lays a frothy mass of eggs, which is about the size of a big marshmallow or a ping pong ball. And that froth dries and feels just like styrofoam. It's super lightweight. It provides some insulation and the eggs are embedded inside. A lot of times in our area, people will bring in a Christmas tree in their house and they'll call me because they found a praying mantis egg case on the branches of the Christmas tree. If you leave that egg case on your tree, the warm temperatures can induce those mantises to hatch out. And before you know it, you might have 200 to 400 nymphs walking around your house. It's little miniature praying mantises. It's an incomplete metamorphosis. It's a gradual change. The little ones will look like the adult stages. When they do grow, they do so by shedding their excess skeleton. So if you inadvertently find a praying mantis egg case on your Christmas tree, clip that branch off, take it outside, place it in, in a shrub, even near your house, and let them go through their natural cycle. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. Always be skeptical when you see some unusual facts or information presented online, on Facebook, on social media, or even, you know, on websites. Always be skeptical and check it out. And check it out. I loved watching the praying mantis. They're just fascinating the way they move, the way they turn their heads, and even the way they responded to me when I reached out and touched his antenna. They're so serene and calm. They're fascinating, fascinating insects. So if you see a praying mantis, take some time to, to watch it and observe it. It's a really fascinating thing. So I hope you like this episode of Nature at Your Door. If you like what I do, please subscribe. Please click like. It helps me spread the message and get more people involved in watching this program, which I think is worthwhile. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode of Nature at Your Door.